Good morning and welcome to another Thursday morning down in Tauranga. And I want to start off with this disclaimer. Jan Fulun is not an immigration advisor. So get that in, in your heads, guys and girls, please, and welcome, Vanita. Vanita, good morning. Good morning, Jan. I'm just laughing at your disclaimer. Because <laughs> I know You somebody... are a, a, an immigration advisor. Is that I right? Am... I am an immigration advisor. I am not a financial advisor. <laughs> That's good. We've got that right. So let's put your thing on so that people don't uh, get us wrongly here and think that I'm giving uh, immigration advice because I'm too stupid to know anything about immigration. But um, stuff has happened in, in New Zealand a few, or well, let's say the last few weeks or so, and you've got more news on that. Yeah, I do. So, um, okay, I'm just going to make a disclaimer that the policies came out yesterday, and this is for the pathways to residence on the green list. Now, they, so, so they're pretty new policies. Obviously, a lot of advisors may interpret them a little bit differently in terms of uh, assessments and so on. So I am making the disclaimer that if I've made a mistake, uh, you know, my apologies on that. But I am going to give you sort of the high level. And, you know, as we work through, because these are all brand new policies, and um, it's the first time we are going to be going through it with clients. Um, first, it, pretty much everybody's going to be going through it with clients. So whatever we knew, we need to almost forget and rewire our brains with the new policy. Right. So, so pretty much um, the three pathways that were announced were uh, on the green list and the highly paid uh, occupation as well. So um, uh, that's interesting because we thought immigration is probably going to provide that information like a lot later, but at least they've sort of told us when these pathways are going to open. So um, I know this green list term has been used quite loosely and it's very specific um, with regards to how occupations are assessed and how they are um, um, sort of um, assessed for pathways to residence, especially if you're doing the fast track or the straight to residence, which opens on the 9th of November. So um, they've, they've made some allowances and so on. So the straight to residents are the ones on the tier one pathway to the green list. Um, and that means that there's three columns in there, pretty much, you know, which says what the occupation is, what the end score is, and what the qualifications are. In other okay. words, you need to meet the criteria of those qualifications. So giving you an example, but this is a tier two, right? If you have a diesel mechanic, they have to be assessed by NZQA. And that's where I'm, I'm sort of stressing that that's your starting point is get an assessment with whichever body is required for that occupation. Like plumbers have the plumbers, uh, plumbers board that will assess your qualification. Electricians have the electrician, uh, electrical board that will assess their qualifications. So that's what I'm saying is you need to get that assessed. It's either assessed or exempt. Okay. And how, how will they know if it's exempt? Uh, there is an exempt list uh, on the immigration uh, instructions or policies, okay. and you need to meet the criteria of that exempt list uh, to be able to say, okay, right, uh, it's assessed as exempt, and I'm okay, I don't need to go and do an NZQA. Now, just okay. to let you know, NZQA is taking about four months to assess these qualifications. So you're kind of looking, like if you're looking for a job or have a potential job mm -hmm. offer, and if you want to meet certain criteria of the green list, you may actually need to wait for that NZQA to be passed, then apply for your visa and so on. Um, um, just, sorry, sorry. sorry. We're chipping in here. It looks like they're just making it more difficult. It is more difficult because the green list is only specific occupations. It's not hairstylists. It's not, uh, you know, other people that they may have not mentioned. Like, for instance, the IT sector, that's a unique one in, all, in itself. What they've done is, and, and when I looked at it yesterday, I was like, wow, okay. The IT sector, they've only got a list of occupations that they've put on the green list. Okay. But that is not with a qualification. That is with an earning so if you want to go, and it's interesting because what they've said is for those occupations on that green list that are listed in the IT uh, and telecommunication sector, if you are earning 180,000, you can go straight to residence and apply uh, from the 5th of September. 
if you are if you are earning 120k you have to wait two years to apply for residence okay so they've changed that they've made a change on that one yeah. but that has no qualification at all and sorry with that two years if you're earning 120k you need a minimum of 10 years of working experience in that industry okay Okay. Yeah. So that's the only occupation where they've actually said no qualifications, but they've actually made remuneration as a criteria on that. But let me come let me come back to it. Okay. For for this, um, so there's the straight to residence, there's the work to residence green list, and there's the highly paid. Right? Okay. So the highly yeah. so there's three there's three there's three okay. categories under the three pathways. The points tested system has not opened, it'll open it towards the end of the year. Okay, so if you don't fall in any of the green list occupations or the highly paid, um, you are not going to be able to apply for, or you don't know what your pathway to residence is until um, the points tested system opens. Um, Do you know what that's going to be? Uh, no. And it's going to be completely revamped. Uh, yeah. My feeling is it's completely revamped. It's not going to be a draw every fortnight because just remember, we've met our residence program for the next four to five years. Yeah. So my feeling is they are going to pick um, the skills that they want out of that pool and, and invite them to apply. But it will be interesting. So just to give you an overview of the, the category for the, with the three pathways is health and character need to be passed as well as English for all applicants over the age of 16. Okay. So the principal applicant needs to pass um, the English in, at a higher level. The partner and children, uh, well, the partner, yes, and the children, anyone aged 16 and over need to do an English test. Okay. okay. And this is, this is from straight to residence, right up to work to residence, right up to highly paid. So it's across the board now. It's not just the points tested system okay. where you need to do English. Yeah. So that's another four hundred. There's no other other way around that. No, if you don't, if you fail to meet the English test and the criteria, you can buy ESOL or you can. There's 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 a table in there where it says you can buy lessons, what the cost is, and so on. And there's a requirement as to showing the 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 the, the office of the case officer that you've done all those things if you can't pass English. Okay. Okay. So so that's a criteria. Also, um, previously with work to residence, when you did your temporary visa, you could get your temporary visa at 55 years and apply for residence from work two years later, which was at 57. Now that's all changed. You have to be 55 years or younger to apply for residence at the time of lodgement. Okay. So your ideal candidate is not gonna be 54 coming into the country and waiting two years to be able to apply for the work to residence or the highly paid. It's going to be probably the 52 year old. That, that, as okay. a cutoff, basically. Pretty much. Yes. So yeah. that's the age. Okay. Now, the interesting part is on the green list, if you meet all the criteria, you can go straight to residence. That's tier one straight to residence from the 5th of September. Yeah. The work to residence, which is the second one, you have to wait 24 months to apply for residence. But they've actually backdated this. And what they've said is, if you've met the criteria for work to re residence under tier, um, sorry, under tier two, and I'll give you an example. You, sometimes you would have had partners meeting the residence criteria, but they couldn't apply. It okay. was only the main applicant, okay? Like, for instance, the main applicant wore, and, and maybe with the 2021 resident application, they didn't meet the criteria that as a main applicant as of the 29th of September. They weren't earning $27, $27 or whatever that may have been, okay? Right. So they weren't able to apply for residence. But their partner may have been like a diesel mechanic, okay? And But they were a partner, and the partner was not allowed to apply for the 2021 residence. It's the same with like some of the occupations with nurses and so on. But now those nurses fall under tier two. So what they've done is they've said on the 29th of September 2021, any work visa holder who's met the criteria can apply after 24 months. And they're counting that date from the 29th of September. So they're sort of okay. giving you about eight months or so um, to be able to count. And going forward, you need to meet the, the next, like the total of 24 months. 
right. so that's what they've done yeah it's the first time they've backdated something like this all right so yeah but i think it's, it's i think because you know there's been a lot of uh, debate in the in, in the newspapers and in the media about um like nurses not being fast tracked and so on they've yeah. almost like covered that now saying okay we're giving you the eight months or nine months that you can claim now you've just got to do the additional and you can then go to residence from there all right yeah that's quite interesting um what, what about the partners there's still a bit of a Descriptions about the partners coming in that they will not get work visas or yeah and these look the cabinet papers that uh, these I know there's talk about it saying yes partners can get the work visas now and so on there's no, uh, but that's just been in the media it's not been announced in policy as yet reading the cabinet papers from July um, it's a bit ambiguous because what they've said is if you if your main applicant is earning two hundred percent of median wage. Okay. or their occupation is on the green list, mm -hmm. their partners will be able to get an open work visa and have open work rights. Mm -hmm. Then they say that um, if you are not on, on the green list, the partner or, you know, or meeting that first criteria, the partners will only be able to get a visitor visa after December of 2022. Yeah. Then they say something about partners being able to work at least 30 hours and getting a work visa. So there's there's a lot of confusion around that because there's three bits of things that they're taking into account, but there's talk about it. They haven't put that into policy as yet. So be aware that if you don't meet certain criteria, your partner may need to get their work visa in their own right with an accredited employer. So that's, uh, that's where the partners come in. That doesn't solve the problem that New Zealand currently have because we need workers. Oh, we do need workers and I think what they're trying to do is to say that we only want the highly skilled partners as well. We don't want the partners taking on admin roles or low level roles that New Zealanders can fill. It's kind so of Yes, uh, yes. And I know you've been seeking employees and so on, which you are struggling to get as well. Yeah. So so that's a thing, though. And, and that's the thinking behind it. But I really don't know, you know, I mean, because anything can change. It changes overnight with this government. So it's really difficult to say, you know, where yeah. that stands with that. Um, Rita, are, you, are you ready for a question or two? Yeah, I can take questions and then okay. I can just cover will, the other bits and pieces. I will read this one from the other side that say, Hercules Fenter saying, why are teacher degrees exempt, but not for early childhood education? Um, I don't know because, um, so, so why are teachers degrees exempt? Mm -hmm. uh, not necessarily because the teachers actually have to go through the teaching council, just like early childhood teachers have to go through the, uh, the, the teaching council to get their qualifications assessed and then they have to apply for registration. So they're not exempt. The teachers okay. that are on the green list are currently only the ones in science, and I think it's the Pacifica languages that are on the green list. So, and, and these are secondary school teachers. Like primary school teachers are not on the green list, so they'll probably come under the points tested category, you know, where they would somehow be able to get residence from there. Okay. Uh what are the opportunities and remuneration for locksmiths? I don't know don't the remuneration, know. but what are the opportunities? I don't know, because right now the focus is on the green list. A lot of the, like the green list occupations are worldwide sort of shortage that has been identified. So New yeah. Zealand sort of got, gone onto that saying that these are the people we want to stimulate the economy. So with locksmiths and so on, I really don't know. I mean, I think there's only four trades on the list. Yeah, there's only four trades on the list yeah. uh, with the green list, which is the automotive electrician, the diesel mechanic, uh, the diesel motor mechanic, electrician and the plumber. And those yeah. guys have to get their qualifications assessed and they have to have registration with that body. So and you can't say the English test, though. you can't get away from that. <laughs> exactly, stuff. exactly. Unfortunately, you can't. And the thing is, you know, you have to like for like on aisles, just as an example, because that's the most common test, right? Yeah. Um, the main applicant has to get 6.5 uh, on that English test. OK, and the principal applicant has to get five, which is the partner. And I do know that some tradies do struggle with that, you know. Um, but yeah, um, but there are other options to be able to get the English test. Yeah, it's, it's, no, it's a normal thing for tradies to struggle a bit with the English test. So 
yeah. had quite a few friends and clients that have struggled really, but yeah, yeah. And that is the end. So yes, yes. So and if your partner just, eating together five, so it means your partner can basically keep you out of New Zealand as well. Yes. Yes, every applicant has to meet the criteria of what's stipulated in there. Um, the thing is, um, sorry, what was I going to say? There are options if you can't pass the English test, but it is more expensive. Is buying tuition, showing you've bought tuition, uh, all the other bits and pieces as well that are uh, that are in there. But like these things can go up to five, six thousand um, dollars. So that's quite a bit of money if you are desperately in need of passing English or doing something. It can quickly spill out and become a, a big um, money draining pit at the end of the day. Yeah. That's the right words down there. So. Absolutely. Yeah. What so, else? So, okay. So the thing is, because immigration have backdated some of these applications like work to residence, where they can actually apply from the, you know, and count their time, as well as the highly paid, what they've said is any work visa holder can apply for residence on those two. Okay. And you can swap. So if you were on the um, work to residence pathway on the green list, but you've maybe changed occupations, but you're still highly remunerated, okay? You can go into the highly remunerated category and still be able to count your time and vice versa. So say, for instance, you, if you're earning 200% of median wage and then you meet the greenest occupation on, under the work to residence tier two, you can actually swap around on that, but you still have to do 24 months. So it's, it doesn't make sense to me why they're saying that. But uh, yeah, that, that's, a, that's a bit weird that they're saying that. So they're also saying that if you're on a critical purpose visitor visa, you're also eligible to count this time to be able to apply for um, your residence from work or your highly paid. So it's any, any visa, even the partner meeting the criteria yeah. under the yeah can do that so, which which is a good thing you know so yeah. you can do that quick question from my side the critical purpose visa mm. uh, the person coming in on that visa aren't allowed to work until they get their work visa is that right no the main applicant is allowed to work and those oh, critical okay. purpose yeah the main applicant is allowed to work for 12 months the mm. partner can't until they because they've got visitor visa rights That's i right. know that there's a lot of issues around domestic students because some schools are saying no you cannot attend school uh, yeah. you have to pay foreign fee paying like or international fees other schools are saying if you can show me that you've um you know you're applying for your next visa uh, we will take the children on i know that there is i can't remember on the top of my head but there is a provision where it says that these children can attend school for three months out of a 12-month calendar year okay. okay but it has to be in one calendar year mm. but uh, there is a provision somewhere about those international um fees as well where they're actually eligible for domestic fees but i can't remember where that provision is because there's been so many changes <laughs> <laughs> there's another question coming in um from Hercules Fenter as well one more question please Jan so just to be clear if you are not on the green list example teachers then now is not the best time to apply for a visa uh, that would be correct if you want to know exactly what your pathway for residence is now the thing is don't use teachers as a as a loose term it's not all teachers it's only teachers in the science math and uh, the specific uh, languages okay the rest of the teachers are not included on that so if you want to be on the side of caution, then I would say wait for the skill, uh, the points tested system to open, and then you know exactly where you stand and what the requirements are, whether you are going to meet the requirements um, of that. If you want to take a chance, then by all means go ahead and do that. You you know you may have a pathway. I mean the professions I think would have a pathway. It's the ones that don't have qualifications that are probably going to struggle because if you remember before we said to people that didn't have qualifications and didn't quite meet the 160, we said to them, you know what, go and do a course on a level four or something, you know, and get a New Zealand qualifications that's, that's recognized. Yep. Now we don't know what that's going to look like because right now all the qualifications that are being pushed are all the qualifications on the green list. Okay. okay. Yeah. There's another one coming from Sean Langer saying, I have a question. Uh, my wife is coming over on a partner work visa. We're still waiting for our V21 application to be approved. What happens to a visa after December? Does she need to apply for something new? 
Uh, it depends. So the thing is, hopefully that policy will come out. So obviously, um, was his name Sean? Sean, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sean, your wife's visa will be as long as your visa is. So if it's going like two years, three years into the future, she's got work rights for two to three years into the future. If okay. it's expiring soon, then you need to do something about that, you know, um, and maybe a little bit later on in the year where we maybe know a little bit more or we have some indication that there's going to be no work rights on that. Sean was part of the split families. Oh, okay. Yeah, we get back to him and I'm so glad his wife is at least at last, sorry, not at least at last joining him. He says she, another few weeks, I think another two weeks or something and she will be here. So Right. Okay. Uh, that's another question that's popped up there. When applying for AEWV, do you apply for your spouse and child as a group application or do you have to apply separately? This is new territory for us. Usually you would do it as a group. And I do know that the link only includes one person or, or the, the, the token is only for the main accredited, uh, the, the, the work visa holder or the person who's been offered the job. So I would say as a group, you are obviously supporting your family in that application. Um, so that's what you, you should, do, should be doing. That's right. We're getting quite a few questions about people asking different um, jobs that are on the green list, but I think we'll just post a link to the jobs later. Yeah. People are going to go and have a, have a look then themselves there. Another question, when is the point system resuming? Uh, end of the year, because it's under review. So they've said that it's end of the year uh, or late in the year. So probably December 31st yeah. at uh, yeah, whatever time that they usually announce these things. <laughs> There's the old, the old question that we always have. Any update on the parental visa, please? So is it the grandparent visa you're talking about or the, the, the residence? I'm thinking, I'm thinking the residence, uh, parent category. Yeah, I don't know. I, I really don't know what's going on with that. That has been closed for a while now, eh? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, as long as I've been in New Zealand, basically. So I think six odd years. Yeah. yeah. Cause they, they had a big, um, announcement that they are going to open it and they open it, I think for a day or something and they closed it. No, it was going to open in May, 2020 and oh, yeah, they were, right. yeah. And they said, whoever wants refunds, get your refunds. Whoever's going to stay in the pool, stay in the pool. Cause they've changed the criteria. And yeah. then obviously COVID hit and then they shut everything, you know? So yeah. Okay, let's see this question. Hi, if my profession is on tier one of green list and I intend coming over September onwards and can apply for straight to residence visa offshore in September, but do we need to have the English language proficiency evidence? Yes, you do. Answers yes. Yep. Yes, yes. Yep. And the English language test is valid for two years. So whenever you do it, uh, it's valid for two years. Um, an application will be declined if you don't have all the mandatory documents and English yep. is part of it. Um, just like health and character are part of it as well. So change the mindset and you have to do it. Yeah. People tend to forget they, they, they think they can do it later. No, you can't. It's at the time of lodgement you need to meet the criteria. Just on the English language, though, just remember that there are some criteria around it where it says that if you've studied in uh, or completed schooling and work in certain countries like the UK, Canada, Ireland, uh, Australia, New Zealand, then you're exempt from the English language um, assessment um, or test. So, so just be aware that those things also carry weight. So you need to see, am I exempt? Am I not exempt? And then go from there. Um, another question. I also need to know if each of us, husband and wife, can apply for AEWV independently to curb the work partner issue. Uh, you can apply independently if you meet the criteria of it, and you obviously um, you can do that. But again, the partner stuff uh, hasn't been announced as yet. It will come out later on, and then you know. I mean, right now, well, immigration has kind of said that the partners would need their own work visa in their own right, which yeah. is what this person's talking about. Uh, but the thing is, though, uh, once the policies come out, then we know mm. what they are. Currently, we don't know because the policy. We don't right. know exactly. There's been cabinet talk, but that's all there is. Oh my goodness, politicians! <laughs> all right, this is the mystical question of the morning. Hi, Jan. Why are the job checks taking so long? Why is yeah. it ten days? Uh, that is very interesting. Yesterday we had a workshop, which was a very interesting workshop. The job checks are taking 
longer because employment law is not followed, job contracts are not being met, the advertising does not match the job check. There's a whole bunch of issues around it. Just remember, it's the first time employers or advisors are doing these things. So there's a lot of teething problems around it. Also, um, you know, it was interesting because we brought this up yesterday. While you may be issued with a job check and you've got a job check in hand, as an applicant, you still need to meet the criteria of that job check. So if the employer has gone and said that this person need, needs a bachelor's degree, okay, and you don't have a bachelor's degree, you could possibly be declined on that work visa. Oh, okay. So, so, so as I said, this is all new territory for us. So it's going to be interesting to see how the applicants are now going to match. Because if you think about it, we are doing job checks without an applicant in mind. Okay, yeah. we are saying this is the person we want to get. We've tested the New Zealand market. There's no person. Now you from overseas come along and you go, yes, I can do this job. And, you know, everything looks okay. And the employee is really happy with you. And you interview really well but you may not meet the criteria for what was stipulated in their job check, then what happens? And that's the things that, you know, we are working with now. So if you, if you haven't got the master's degree, then they would have to re-advertise that position totally from... Scratch. Exactly. If, 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 if they've got you in mind and now they're advertising for you, because initially they were not advertising for you, they were advertising for the ideal candidate. So that's why employers sometimes need to really think about, okay, what do I want to attract who can meet this criteria as you know even from overseas and then go for the job check this is, an, this is also a question that we had i think we spoke earlier in the year about this will there be a list of accredited employees at some point <laughs> everybody when they're applying for work so there won't be a list because if you've been offered a job that employer has to be accredited and they know this so all employers uh, are employed migrant workers from offshore have to be accredited no matter what and they have to retain and just they have to retain their accreditation when you apply for residence so they can't just become accredited get you in on a three-year work visa and then drop the accreditation that means your residence is in jeopardy so so guys doing the thing that they did in the past and get on the airplane get a visitor visa come and visit new zealand and then apply for a position here and get the job and start working within a few days or so that is basically out now it's out i would say unless if you're really highly skilled you're on that um list um or when the sector agreements come in you know you're part of the your occupation is part of that sector agreement then I think it would work because the employers have already tested the market. They know that there's a shortage of those skills. And then uh, they can offer you the token for the job check. Then you can apply while you're in New Zealand on the visitor visa. And then you can maybe get the work visa and start working. The only thing is, um, I know we always talk about look, see, decide sort of visas. You could be questioned when you do your work visa on whether your intention was to really visit the country, and it depends on how your visitor visa was done, whether you, your intention was to visit the country or to actually, you had nothing to go back to, you've sold everything and you've come, you know, and that's where you could have questions about your bona fides as well. And the other thing is, when you've, if you've done all the, if you've done your, uh, your NZQA test or, or checks and you've done your English test, uh, the chance to come over and look, see and decide, it's, it's not very good actually. Well, no, no, Jan. Jan, the thing is if people are quite skilled and so on, okay, and they are preparing, right? So just remember, everybody says I'm document ready. Now, what does that mean, right? Getting your passport, getting your police certificate, doing your medicals, obviously, once you get something in, in, in hand, um, um, doing your medicals, also doing your assessment, your skills assessment now, because that's what we're doing. We're asking for a skills assessment to be able to show that your qualification is equivalent to that of a New Zealander. Okay. That's right. And if that job check is saying that we want a level seven or a like bachelor's degree for this job, then you need to show that, okay, I do have that or it's exempt. And yes, I do have this bachelor's degree. 
you know so so th there's a lot of things now in terms of document ready that you need to get and need to think about all right there's two questions uh quick questions uh is there a processing time frame yet for the green list straight to residence visa let's take that one Okay, um, so the so the priority is for um, so so the priority for residence is that occupations that are going straight to residence and work to residence are prioritized above all other residence applications, which tells me that the twenty twenty one is going to take a back seat, yeah. um, and that and that's what's in the policy right now. So they also ask um, where can they find the details what's needed for that visa? It's probably immigration New Zealand website, eh? Yeah. Okay. How long does the visa process take for the class border exemption visa? That is falling away um, in, in a few days' time. So, um, look, I mean, depending on the border exemptions, they could take a week. It all depends, mm -hmm. but that's falling away on the 31st of December. I'm sorry, so July. It won't, it won't no. take long because it won't be there anymore. So. No, it won't be there anymore. It's gone. I'm on the green list, but would like to know if I come onshore after 31 July, will I still get fast track to residency? Uh, yes, you would. Uh, the thing is, though, you need to obviously have a job offer. And yeah. that's the other criteria. You, you can't just say, I meet all the skills and you need to have that job offer as well. And yes, you could. Yeah. yeah. It opens 5th of September. Yeah. Right. Vanita, thanks a lot. Time has flown past this morning like crazy. So once again, thanks uh, to you for um, demystifying immigration for us. <laughs> um, I'll just pop us out and then um, I'll see you in a few minutes. Always a pleasure, Jan. Thank you. Right. Thanks. Guys, that was Vanita Vanita's uh, uh, immigration advisor. So she are allowed to talk about all this stuff that um, I'm not allowed to talk about. So that's why she is here. So thanks for Vanita for that. Guys, same place, same time next week. See you all there. Thank you.